Tired of the everyday routine? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? Escape! Designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Tonight we escape to the waterfront of Havana and to an underworld where men live and sometimes die by a bizarre code of their own. As Burnham Carter tells it in his exciting story, Night in Havana. Something was wrong. Halfway up the street of pious works that evening, I realized that something was wrong. None of the regulars were to be seen. Assuredly, something was wrong. But what? And then I remembered that since I had decided to live an honest life, it was really no concern of mine. As I came abreast of the Huai Worry restaurant, I saw the Dutchman, Maru, who owned a cabin cruiser and who was, consequently, a man of some prominence in the smuggling trade. He was standing on the weighing machine near the door, slapping it with his big ah, hands. Ah, Tio, you have a penny? A penny? <laughs> see, see, here. Thanks. Ah, 193 pounds. When I reach 195, I'll switch from beer to coffee. <laughs> when I hit 190, I go back to beer. <laughs> It's like the rise and fall of the tide in Habana Harbor. <laughs> Two pounds of beer to go. If you're headed for the Cafe Mosca, I'll join you. Well, bueno, bueno. Hey, come along. Uh, Tio, huh? got a few dollars to lend me? I? Oh, I have not seen any money in weeks. I was hoping to find a purchaser for my gun this evening. Oh, Tio, you're kidding. You're going to sell your gun? See? Si. How will you live? Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Honestly, Maru, you? Please, please, you are attracting attention. <laughs> quiet, you have attracted oh. attention. Be quiet. What, what, what? The police, the police, Lieutenant Molina, across the street. Oh, oh. oh, here they come. Who's that with him? Sergeant Ortiz, newly promoted, very ambitious, and... Uh, no, no, I missed the highlight game last night, Maru. I, I remained at home and read instead. You, <laughs> stand where you are. Oh, it is Lieutenant Molina and Sergeant... Search this one, Sergeant. Nothing, Lieutenant. This one conceals nothing. Right, you see, I lead a dull and peaceful life. I see that you do. Use your handkerchief, Theo. Your lips bleeding. They seem upset. Uh, I bear them no ill will. <laughs> they have a hard life, too. Uh, uh, is it still bleeding, huh? Yeah, yeah. You can doctor it at the cafe Moscow. Uh, they must have been told to get someone for something. You know, I held my breath doing that frisk. I was afraid you might be carrying your gun. <laughs> I was. But when I saw them coming toward us, I put it in your pocket. Oh, <laughs> you... May I have it now, please? Here. That is not what I would call honorable, Tio. Uh, Maru, there is so little honor in this world that one is just not able to toss it about indiscriminately. <laughs> Tell me, does my lip uh, look bad? It's beginning to swell. Ah. Amalia will be very upset. Amalia? Who owns the Moscow? Si, si. We are betrothed. No. I <laughs> si. did not know that. Congratulations. Oh, gracias. Come, come, come. I, I buy you a beer. Come on, step up to the bar. Uh, uh, later, later, perhaps. Thank you. But now I must see Amalia. Tio. Tio, little one. Oh, I tio your lip. Oh, did nothing, Amalia. Nothing, the police were in a petulant oh. mood. There is nothing. Oh, uh, the police, yes. They were here. A lieutenant. Uh. Wait, he gave me his card. Yes, uh, Lieutenant Molina. Ah, uh, tell me, did he mention the cause of all this ill feeling? An American tourista, a very rich one, a very gay one. She has been robbed. Ah, I... And so soon after the police chief let it be known that American tourists were not to be robbed. Si. Ah. Hey, uh, Amalia, what did she lose? An emerald. An emerald of great size. Oh. She had it in her purse, left the purse in the Cafe Diablo. Tio, huh? 
You had nothing to do with this matter, did you? I? Oh, no, no, my fair one, nothing. Yeah. I wish I had. You promised, Tio, you promised. I, I know, I know, but... Uh, Amelie, it's not easy to be honest. I would have been honest years ago, could I have earned money, I think. Little one, listen to me. Uh. After each of your transactions, they have kept you in the jail. Mm. It is like my account books. One malefaction, one payment in jail. See. Si. Now you owe them nothing. There are no debts. But you have a debt. The mortgage of $2,100 on this cafe. Oh, let that be. Little by little we shall pay it. But there is my pride to consider, my dove. To this marriage, you bring the cafe Mosca. I bring nothing. Ay, tío. You bring your love. Is that nothing? Oh, in your eyes it is much, see, but in the eyes of the bank it's nada. Who is this American tourist who carries emeralds in her purse? Huh? Oh, uh, Mrs. Stenner. She is here with her husband. They have great wealth. They came from Miami in their own cruiser. It is called the Seabird, and it is almost as large as Maru's. Hmm? Theo, promise me you will not become involved. Uh, I promise that if I do, it will be within the law. Oh, little one, I beg you. It will you. be within the law, I swear it to you. Uh, the... Lieutenant Molina mentioned a, a reward? No. He said that if I acquired information concerning the Emerald, I was to inform either him or Mr. and Mrs. Turner at the, oh, uh, yeah, the Hotel Flores. Ah. Well, perhaps it would be best to learn whether there is a reward and of a size sufficient to warrant time and effort. I am going to see uh, Senor Stern Amalie. Tio, little one, I am afraid. Oh, there is nothing to fear. An honest man need never have anything to fear. Uh, let me have Lieutenant Molina's card, my dove. It may help me to impress the Americans. Yes? Uh, Senor Stern. Yeah? Uh, I am Lieutenant Molina of the secret police. Uh, my card. Oh, oh, well, uh, come in, Lieutenant Molina. Uh... Tell me, is, is there another detective with that name? It seems to be... Uh, well, I... well, it is a common patronym, like in your country, uh, Smith. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, well, have you found the emerald? Uh, regrettably, Senor, no. But I would like to talk about it. And I'll call my wife. She's the one who lost it. The knucklehead Lucille! Here I am. Don't yell so, Ducky. Uh, this is Lieutenant <laughs> Molina of the secret police. Ah, oh, it is a great honor, Senora. <laughs> Did you see that, Ducky? He took my hand. I saw now, sit down, Lieutenant. You care for a drink? Uh, no, thank you. Not while on duty. Uh, what's on your mind, Lieutenant? My wife and I have a dinner date It tonight. has occurred to us, the Chief and I, that although we will, of course, eventually catch the thief, it will take some time. Uh, you understand, there are a thousand rat holes and rats of many nations and much cunning. We don't have much time. Mrs. Sterner and I are leaving Havana tomorrow afternoon. Uh, and that brings me precisely to my point. Uh, the... Matter of a reward. Oh, no, 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 no. Not another nickel. If I can't grease the wheels with 750 bucks, they just won't be greased. I'm a reasonable man, Lieutenant, but I'm no sucker. Of course you are not, uh, 750. Ducky, I'm sure the Lieutenant knows his business. If he thinks the reward ought to be boosted, then boost it. I want that emerald back. Now, look, Lucille, I Would a I thousand don't... be better, Lieutenant? Oh, indeed it would, Senora. Then all for a thousand, Ducky. <laughs> you see, Senor Stenner, uh, whether I go between... Yeah, 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 I know how it works. Okay, call it a thousand. A thousand dollars? It would not pay the mortgage on the Café Mosca, of course, but considering that virtue is said to be its own reward for being, it was handsome. I spent the next two hours seeking knowledge of the Emerald, but the activities of the police had forced the best of the regulars into hiding, and I learned nothing. And then, as I was walking along the street of souls in the old city, a voice spoke to me from the darkness of the gateway to the ancient convent known as El Corazon. Uh, Tio Martinez. Ah, uh, your servant, senor. Uh, I've got a matter we'd like to talk to you about. We? Oui? Him and me. Oh, your pardon. I could not see your friend in the shadows. Uh, we got a mutual acquaintance. Georgia Young. G Georgia Young? Oh, see, si, see. Si. I have not seen him since the profitable years of prohibition. Uh, before we left Miami, he said to look you up if we ever needed someone to work an angle. Uh, he gave us his letter of introduction. Oh, thank you. Uh, strike a match, please. Yeah. Ah, a little closer, please. Uh, dear friend Theo. These muchachos are okay. I have a deal with them. 
Just like in the old days, Georgie. Oh, well, uh, you know my name. What is yours? Uh, Moore, Gus Moore. My name's none of your business. Uh, stop it, Leo, will you? His name's Leo Walsh. Uh, we only been here in Cuba a little while. Uh, you said that you needed somebody to work an angle. Yeah. We got a shipment on the Florida coast just beyond Key West. We want it brought here tonight. There's 400 rifles. Uh, please, some... please, please. I am not interested in the nature of your cargo. You tell me that you are importers, and that is all an honest man need know. Yeah. Uh, is it George Young who provides you with the merchandise? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> just like in the old days. <laughs> uh, it can be done, gentlemen, but it will cost money, of course. Uh, $1,500. That's highway robbery. Let me rough him up a little. Stop it, Leo, will you? Okay, Martinez, 1500 Cash on delivery. Uh, half of it now. Uh, 300 bucks now. <sighs> I'm sorry, no. Well, that's all the cash we have. How do you propose to get more? How much is this worth? The, the American Tourista's Emera. Huh? <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> oh, just the ways of fortune. <laughs> I'm sorry, you would not understand. <laughs> you talk too much. <laughs> yeah, see, one of my great failings. I can fix that. Cut it out, Leo. <laughs> Well, how about it? That rock's worth more than 1200 Oh, much more. But the question is, uh, what can one unload it for? Hmm. Tell me, how did you acquire this? Huh? Oh, a dame I picked up at a bar while the husband was dead drunk. Well? I will make the arrangements. You give me 300 on the emerald. Yeah, you get the 300 now as a binder. I'll hand you the stone when you've delivered. Very well, I agree. Now, you listen carefully to me. You will both meet me at the Café Mosque at 11 o'clock. Hmm. We shall drive from there to to a certain beach where we pick up the boat. Is that clear? Yeah. Uh, Leo will meet you. And you? Oh, I'm staying at Havana. i got to make arrangements for the truck. I'll meet the boat when it comes back and hand over the emerald. Uh, just tell me where. Uh, the beach at Marianao. There's a dirt road. You cannot miss it. Three hours to Key West, 15 minutes to load, three hours back to Cuba. Mm -hmm. The boat will arrive at Marianao by 5 tomorrow morning. Is it well? Yeah. Uh, here's your 300. <laughs> Much thanks, senor. You know what I do to chappies who talk too oh, much? Stop it, Leo, will you? You'll meet at the mosque at 11. It will be my pleasure. Well, is that coffee you drink, Maru? Oh, sit down, Tio, sit down. <laughs> yeah, it's coffee, all right. I hit 195 a half hour ago. Well, what's up? If you are not too busy tonight, there's a little shipment to be moved in from Key West. Oh, how much? A thousand dollars for you. And for you? Ah, only one hundred. Go on, what do you think? I'm stupid. <laughs> oh, you are a devil. One can hide nothing from you. Very well, I receive one hundred and fifty. Ah, you... Easy to deal. What time do we leave? Around eleven. I'll have the boat ready just off Guanabaco. You know the dock, sir? Yes. Bring the thousand with you. I will give you the thousand tomorrow, soon after we return. Bring it with you, or we do not even leave. Well? Uh, I will bring it with me. Good. Have some coffee. Uh, no, gracias. It is necessary now to see Amelia. Until 11, then. Until 11. I was worried, little one. You were gone so long. Oh, I had much business to transact. Oh, Amelia, I am working on a deal, a very big deal. Uh, so big that I need a thousand dollars to swing it. Tio. Ah, see, see, I have three hundred and I need seven hundred more. Amelia, will you lend it to me? I have but eight hundred in the whole world. Well, lend me seven. Oh, if this deal proceeds as planned, Amelia, you and I will be married this week. And then I shall settle down as an honest cafe keeper. Oh, Tio, for that I would give all the money there is. Where is this boat? I don't see it. Impatient, Senor Walsh. It's the end of the dock. A dock, he calls it. Some crummy dock. No, quiet, would... quiet, please. Maru. Here, Tio. Ah. Captain Maru, this is Senor Leo Walsh. Uh-huh. Yeah. You uh, have some money, Tio? Here. One thousand dollars has agreed. Senor Walsh will guide you to the exact spot at Key West. And, gentlemen, I 
Wish you both a good chance. Save your wishes for somebody else. You're coming with us. Uh, no, no, I make it a point never I to... I say you are, so does this. Mm. I have a repugnance for guns between associates. And I don't trust people who talk so much. You're coming with us. Now get in. I shall do as you say. All right, now you, Skipper. Thank you. Some tub. You'll never see a faster one. How fast? Forty knots. All right, shove off. Now come here so quiet, big mouth. Oh, I was just thinking. I was thinking that the life of honesty contains almost as much interest as the kind I have formerly led. In just a moment, we will return to Escape. But first, a favorite program with CBS listeners who want to keep abreast of the times is the news report by Alan Jackson, broadcast every Sunday morning over most of these same CBS stations. Jackson is one of CBS's ace reporters who has covered important world events in New York, London, and Berlin. Now stationed in CBS Washington News Bureau, Alan Jackson brings you the news in a clear, informed manner that has become a CBS tradition. Remember to listen this Sunday to Alan Jackson and the News, a regular CBS feature. Tune in, tune in this fall for the shows that you love best of all. Listen carefully, here's the address. It's CBS, CBS. And now back to Escape and the second act of Night in Havana. Three hours we were passing through the Florida Keys. Maru had no difficulty in following Senor Walsh's directions. There was a place where a finger of land got into the water, an old rum runner's landing base which I remembered well. A truck was waiting, and three men who came forward as we tied to the dock of rotting planks. Senor Walsh spoke to them briefly, and in ten minutes the heavy crates were on board and we were off again, clearing the land quietly at a low speed and then roaring into the open. Come on, pour it on, pour it on. I'm giving it full throttle now. Uh, Relax, Sonny. Listen, squarehead. You talking to me? Who else? I don't like for you to call me Sonny. I do it because you're so bright. How would you like a third eye? Senor Walsh, Maru, enough, enough. Carry this as far as you please once we are on shore, but until then... Yeah, we will win to it first after we I led them to the squabbling and stretched out on the bench in the cockpit, my head on my arms, gazing into the sky and soothed by the powerful hum of the engines, so steady that they were in themselves a sort of silence. I thought of Amalia and how soft and comfortable she was, and that we were both at the right age for marriage. Steady people who knew that what we had was worth a dozen romantic flights to the moon. And I thought of how now there would be a little money for the raising of the mortgage and the Café Mosca. And then I dozed. And then... What's the matter? How come you cut the motor? Shut up. Tio, are you awake? Do you hear it? See. Si. Where are your binoculars? Binoculars? What are you looking for? Coast Guard. Where are we, Maru? About two miles off the coast between Matanzas and Havana. Uh, I see them. They're to the west, about the same distance. Out. What is the time? Uh, 4.20. The sun will be up in less than two hours. Which way are they heading? I cannot... Well... There's a searchlight. The CS. They were tipped off. They were looking for us. Somebody talked. Martinez, shut up. It's radar. They're also equipped. I have heard that. Uh, they come toward us. Dump the cargo. When they come, we've been fishing. No, every set I got is tied up in those boxes. I said dump the guns. And I said no. We'll run for it. This boat's faster than that one. At this angle, they have us cut off from the open sea. If we go west, we pass Havana. If we go east, Matanzas. As soon as we move, the radio for help, we call. And I said we'll run for it. Now take the wheel, fat boy, and pour it on. But on. They're moving fast. I command here. No, you don't. This does. Get back to the wheel. Careful, Maru. Careful. He's frightened. Put away your gun, Sonny. Stand where you are. I said... <laughs> Shoot me, will you? Ah! Enough, Maru, enough. His spine has cracked like a banana stalk. Enough, I say. Gio. I hurt. I hurt bad. Uh, Lie down here. Let me see. Uh, Well? Ugly, Maru. Very ugly. Help me. It was a wheel. Yeah. 
Then I drop the dinghy and roll to shore. I try to make it back to Key West. Uh, you need care immediately. We'll both go to shore in the dinghy. But my boat, the Coast Guard... I will turn it out to sea and set the throttles. She'll give them a run for their money. But when they overtake her, they'll find the cargo. They know the boat is mine. One step at a time, Maru. <sighs> the moment we will do as I say. First we feed Senor Wars to the fishes. Then the dinghy goes over the side. Then you and I. I landed the dinghy only a short distance below the place where I'd left the car. Before 5.30, Maru was in good hands and I was at the Flores Hotel, knocking at the door of the suite occupied by Senor and Senora Stern. At that moment, I would have surrendered all thoughts of profit for this night's labor in return for assurance that only Amalia's $700 would not be lost. Uh, oh, Lieutenant Molina, this is a sweet time. I give you a thousand apologies, Senor. Only an emergency forces me to do this. We, we can't get your emerald now. Do you understand? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. But only I... we need your cruiser. You must come with me in your cruiser. And now, now, I assure you it is our only chance. There is no danger, Senor. Well, all right, I'll get dressed. I'll be waiting for you across the street in the black touring car. You come quickly, wear dark clothes, bring the money. But quickly, senor, quickly. Where are we going? We are bound for the beach called Marianao. Never heard of it. As a wooden pier. It should be just about light enough to distinguish. We arrived in... Hey, you have brought the cash. Yeah, yeah. How much do I have to pay? Uh, the maximum, senor, $1,000. Uh, they would not do it for less, I am sorry. Oh, it's okay. I didn't think you could keep them down even to that. Uh, am I on course? Yes, si, si, exactly on course. Uh, we are almost there. I think that you had better give me the money now. Yeah, it's in my right hip pocket, Lieutenant. Help yourself. Ah, much thanks. Uh, senor, I am sorry that our original laxity in guarding the possessions of your wife has put you to all this trouble. Oh, forget it, forget it. It's one piece with the rest of the trip. I've had a lousy time. Oh, I am most sorry. We naturally prefer to have the tourist as love, Cuba. Oh, it's not your fault. I was mostly too drunk to see any of it. I have always tried. Uh, senor, there is more than a thousand dollars in this pocket. There... It's 1100 Oh, yeah, yeah. I meant to tell you. The thousand's for the emerald, the other hundred's for you, for all of your courtesy and attention. Oh, regulations forbid me to accept, senor. But since it would be discourteous, much thanks. <laughs> hey, we are past Caminitas now, I think. Yes, uh, there is the dock in the now. Here, let me take the wheel. Hey, someone on shore is blinking a light there. Huh. Three times. I have noticed Hey, what are you doing? Heading out to sea? No, no, no. I will back in. So. And now comes the most important part, senor. Now, when I bring the boat to a halt at the dock, you must take the wheel and keep your hand on the throttle with the motor running. And when I say to you, now, you throw in the clutch and full speed ahead. Do you understand me, senor? Well, sure, but why? It's all arranged, isn't it? See, si, see, si, it is arranged, and this is the most crucial part of the arrangement. Okay, whatever you say, Lieutenant. Uh, all right, you take the wheel. Now remember, keep your hand on the throttle. Uh, don't forget, easy. Uh, here comes my man along the dock now. Remember, when I say now. Uh, go ahead, let's get this over. Si. Uh, Senor Moore. Martinez. See, si, see, si. everything has gone well. West watch. At the wheel. Oh, good. Uh, throw me a line to get my boys to start unloading. Uh, first, before you tie us up, we will conclude our affair. Huh? You have the emerald for me? Oh, yeah. Here. Here, take it. Ah, good, good. Much thanks. Here is our cable. Make fast the ball, huh? Yeah, I got it. Now, senor, now! Lie down. Lie down on the deck. What? But quickly. You will not be surprised forever. Lie down. Stay there. Well, I don't understand. I think we'll soon be out of range. Uh, you lead an interesting life, Molina. <sighs> It has its moments. When I saw you hand him the cable, I was sure I'd rip the stern off her as soon as I gave it throttle. Uh, well, senor, I took the precaution to untie it on our side first. <laughs> uh, look, look, the sun is rising. Uh, senor, do you know of any satisfaction to compare with that accompanying a good job well done? Uh, 
Three days later, I was sitting at a table in the Café Moscow with Maru. His wounds still trouble him, and he had lost much weight. Uh, a matter he was remedying as quickly as he could. Two more beers. Uh, better make it three. Visit our poaches. Oh. No, no, no. Don't turn your head. It's Lieutenant Molina. Oh, oh. they found my boat. Uh, you are ready with the story. It was stolen while I was ill. I know nothing of it. Bueno, bueno. I will testify to it. Uh, no, 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 Maru. I have lost my taste for reading. I now spend most evenings at the highlight games, and I find Captain that I'm... Captain Maru? Yeah? The Coast oh, Guard so. has found a boat that belongs to you. Do you have so many that one may be lost without your feeling the necessity of reporting it? Uh, I've been ill. I've not been down to the harbor these three days. I have a question to ask. Hmm. Ask it, then. They found several large crates on board. They did? Do you know what we discovered in them? Uh, scrap metal. S scrap metal? <laughs> I use it for ballast. Uh, you care for beer? I uh, see, see, to celebrate my wedding, which occurs this afternoon. So I have heard. You are going to lead an honest life, Tio? See, si, see. Si, uh, I have been experimenting with it, and I find that it suits me. Well, keep it confidential. Otherwise, the budget for the police department may be cut to the bone. <laughs> Goodbye, Lieutenant. Go with God. You heard what he said? His crates contain scrap metal. I'm not surprised. <laughs> in the note my friend George Young sent to me, he wrote that he was in on a deal just like in the old days. Huh? Well, in the old days, he sold many a bootlegger barrels of whiskey which contained only water. Oh. <laughs> in that way, you see, he did not break the law and may be said to have earned his money honorably. As uh, I may be said to do, too. You call owning a cafe earning money honorably? Well, it depends on the clientele. Oh. And uh, in that respect, Maru, uh, perhaps it would be better uh, after the wedding, of course, if you took your custom elsewhere. Suppose I tell you that from now on, I will be as honest as you yourself. Will you let me patronize this bar? Oh, gladly, Maru. But, uh, of course, I will be doubly watchful of the cash register. <laughs> <laughs> Escape is produced and directed by William N. Robeson. Tonight we have presented Night in Havana by Burnham Carter, adapted for radio by Walter Brown Newman. Featured in the cast were Tony Barrett as T.O., Alan Reed as Maru, and Janet Nolan as Amelia and Mrs. Sterner. Also heard were Ted Von Elts, Bill Conrad, Jeff Corey, and Jack Webb. Special music was arranged and conducted by Del Castillo. Next week... You are tortuously worming your way inch by inch through a narrow pipe deep under the ground unable to turn back, not knowing what lies ahead, possible death or escape. Next week, we escape with William Corcoran's grim story, The Blue Wall. Good night, then, until the same time next week when once again we offer you Escape. Young and old benefit by the Community Chest Red Feather Services. When you make your contribution this year, you'll be helping to support the Boy and Girl Scouts, the YMCA and the YWCA, child guidance clinics and day nurseries. So give generously to the Red Feather Services. Stay tuned now for Sing It Again, which follows immediately over most of these same CBS stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. ¶¶